Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship with us this morning. Some information to share with each other in the fellowship here at Good Shepherd Lutheran. First of all, I'd like to say a big thank you to Andy in the office and Lori in the ministry for my first week here. They've been very, very helpful. I want to say what I think about this ministry. You are definitely a congregation that cares for each other. I've seen that all week long, whether Monday night at the council meeting, when all kinds of issues are discussed, if there's any problems, we work at a solution to the problems. We're working on fellowship all the time, all how to make education for the young people better, how to fix the parsonage up, things like that. The council went well. The, on Tuesday, I noticed People lined up for the food shelf hours ahead of time. You care for others. You bring foodstuffs. On Thursday, somebody came in wanting to give us some apples for the food shelf. Kathy has been in there organizing the food shelf. On Wednesday, you, not this many people were at that fellowship meal. This, you should consider coming to that fellowship meal on Wednesday night. It's just an awesome time of sharing. And then we have a worship in here following that, that experience. I would also encourage you as parents, get those children registered today, down in social hall. You can get them registered. And uh, in addition to that, just a big thank you to all of you as we, we realize what the vision and mission of this church is, which is to care for others. Those are some of the announcements I wanted to bring to your attention. Also, during the liturgy today, there's a part where just the kids speak. You as parents, and we're going to ask the kids from MSU to be speaking the children's part in the liturgy, but you as parents encourage your young people to speak their part during the liturgy this morning. Please note that. Al Quad had a fall, but Al is doing extremely well, we are told. And in addition to that, a baby was born to a, the, the, the family of Joe Mutchler and Don Lucky this week, a baby boy born on the 12th of September. Again, and I wanted to know one other thing, the, the generous offerings that you've been giving in your time, talents, and treasures, I note that, I look at that, you're very strong in that. We encourage you to continue in that manner. Then Sandy Hartman from the call committee would like some time to, to talk to you at this time. Good morning. We're almost there. Next Sunday, we're going to vote to call for a pastor. The 21st of September, it's an official notice. Again, you need to know that. And I encourage all of you to be here for that vote. I understand there's a couple of questions that we need to kind of clear up that people are talking about tossing around. And one of those questions is, why is it so secret? Why haven't we told you who we're calling? Why don't we put information out there about her? You know it's a she. I let that part out a few weeks ago. The reason we're not disclosing any information about her is she has requested the confidentiality piece remain in place until next Sunday, the day that we vote. She has her reasons wanting it to be kept confidential and so it's our part to respect that request and to honor it. Believe me, you will know all about her next week before you vote. We are preparing a little biography about her and her family that will be handed out next Sunday before, during the service or before. I'm not sure how we're going to handle that. So you'll have all the information you need about her. Also, I'm hoping as many call committee members can be here next Sunday so we can field any questions that you might have about her before we vote. So you're going to know all about her when we vote next Sunday, and I encourage you to be here. And then I understand the question is, why a two-thirds vote majority for the call of a pastor as opposed to typically a quorum is required? The Good Shepherd Constitution is written that way. That's exactly how it's put in there. We do not have to have a quorum. We only have to have a two-thirds majority vote of the voting members who are present. So as an example, if we only had three people here next week who are voting members, if two of those people said yes, we'd place the call. 
So that's how the Good Shepherd Constitution is written. We're just, remember I told you a few weeks ago that I was going to make sure that we dotted all the I's and crossed all the T's to make sure we do this the right way and not stumble anywhere, and that's what we're doing. We're making sure we follow our Constitution the way it's written. And the voting will be by secret ballot. That's also in our Constitution. And I want to talk to the people who are at home right now watching this on the videotape or on your computer. We'd love to have you here next week and voting with us. We want your voice to be heard and your vote to count. So we'd like to see you here at church next Sunday. Thank you. Sandy, thank you and your team so much for all that work that you're doing. Today we welcome Pastor Tammy Dahlweg from the Crossroads Lutheran Ministry in Minnesota, at Minnesota State University in Mankato, along with a bunch of students. Yeah. It might, it might, yeah, welcome. Yeah. In my involvement, one of the things I've picked up through the years is the church is always one generation away from extinction. And this is the next group. And they're smiling, and they're happy, <laughs> and they're doing things maybe in a little bit different ways but they're naming the name and telling the story. We welcome you today and we welcome Pastor Tammy. At this time we introduce Pastor Tammy Dalvik. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Um, some of the students are going to be handing out bulletin inserts. Uh, you can go ahead and take a look at them. Maybe not during the sermon. <laughs> but, um, go ahead and take a look at them and they kind of tell you a little bit about Crossroads and some of the things that we're doing. I'll introduce the students. You guys want to stand up? Okay. The two people handing out inserts are Ed on this side, and that's Chris. Um, and that is Connor, Kirsten, Katie, Sarah, and Hannah. And they are excited to lead the children in all of these uh, capitalized, bolded uh, parts here. So. I hope that the kids can be really loud, and I hope the students can be really loud, too. <laughs> um, you'll hear more from me and about Crossroads later in the sermon. Um, one thing I wanted to say is, if you do feel as though you want to support the ministry financially, there are offering envelopes by the big picture board um, as you walk in on the left of the entryway to the sanctuary. I'd like to invite you now to sing the gathering song, 236. This is the day. to the rock of my salvation. Oh 
Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. Quiet now. Don't make so much noise. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. Now you be quiet. I don't want to have to take you out. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. upon your hearts to mark you as one redeemed by Christ and crucified and I invite you to turn to your neighbor and to trace the sign of the cross on your neighbor's forehead if that makes you uncomfortable you can just trace it on your own um, and say my name is and I have been marked by the cross of Christ he knows me by name I am his child and I am bound to him forever Let us pray. O oh Lord God, enliven and preserve your church with your perpetual mercy. Without your help, we mortals will fail. Remove far from us everything that is harmful and lead us toward all that gives life and salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. was beautiful. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 18, verses 21 through 35. Then Peter came and said to Jesus, 
Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all of his possessions, and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I'll pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves, who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. And when his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy upon your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Song is Jesus Loves Me. sermon. So I'd like to invite the children to come up. And the young at heart. And the young at heart, yes. Well, really nice. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. Hi, guys. Come sit by us. We're not scary. Okay. Oh, that small group. Perfect. <laughs> So how, what, do you guys like sports? Yeah. What's your favorite sport? Football. Football is your favorite sport? Awesome. What do you think the most popular sport is? What do you think? You don't know? Any guess. Any guess. There's no way to answer. Well, did you know that the most popular sport is actually soccer in the whole world? So, recently, the World Cup happened. Do you remember that? What happened in Brazil? Um, do any of you guys play soccer? Or know someone who plays soccer? Yeah? You used to play soccer? That's awesome. So, if you're playing or watching soccer, it is very important to follow the rules. Um, how many of you know, do you guys know what this is? It's a sheet of paper, you're correct. <laughs> but in soccer, 100% correct, A plus. Um, it is actually a yellow card, so in soccer, um, they will hold this up if you do something bad, you know, like take the soccer ball from somebody in a very mean way. <laughs> you know, it's not very nice. And if the player makes another play that's dangerous, they will hold up, the ref will hold up the yellow card again 
but then we'll also show them the red card. And do you guys know what this means? And the red card means that the player's out of the game. He can't play for the rest of the game. And so that's pretty rough punishment, isn't it? I mean, you get one warning and then you're out of there. You know, this is different from a lot of other sports, like baseball, you know, three, three strikes and you're out. Or um, basketball, it's like five or six and then you're out. You know, it's pretty harsh. Um, soccer isn't very forgiving, is it? Um, so if you were to ask Jesus how many times you should forgive someone, what do you think he would say? That's okay, you don't have to get an answer. <laughs> well, because we, we don't even have to guess, because the Bible tells us. So one day, like Pastor Tam was saying, Peter asked Jesus, how many times should I forgive someone who sins? Should I forgive him seven times? I imagine Peter thought that was pretty generous. Seven times forgiving someone? I don't think I would have that sort of patience. But um, to forgive someone seven times is pretty generous. Guess what? And Jesus didn't even agree. Jesus answered to Peter, and he said, not seven times, but 70, 70 times seven. 70 times 7, that's 490 times. So I think that before I got to 490, I would lose count. <laughs> so I think that's probably what Jesus was trying to get tell Peter, was that he wants us to understand that we shouldn't worry about how many times we, we've forgiven someone. We should just keep on forgiving. Because isn't that what God does? He, keeps, he doesn't keep count of how many times he's forgiven us. He just keeps on forgiving. Let's hold our hands and pray together. Dear Father, we are thankful that you love us and forgive us without keeping count. Help us to love and forgive others as you have forgiven us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks, Thanks for joining us, guys. Can you? All right, it's kind of a personal question I'm gonna start off with. When was the last time that you had the realization that you needed to be forgiven? For me, it wasn't that long ago, it was just last Thursday. And that morning, my husband Jay and I had argued about something. I can't even remember what it was, although I vaguely remember feeling like I'd won. You know how that goes. <laughs> And a few minutes later, I walked into the bathroom and picked up the dental floss pick that I had left there on the counter. It had been Jay's a few weeks ago, but he hadn't used it, and so I wanted one and had kind of picked it up and started using it. And he looked at me and he said, I can't believe you stole my flosser. <laughs> stole it? I said I thought we were sharing it. You can have it back. You don't share something you use to clean your teeth with, he said. I tried to get another one last week and the store was sold out. I felt bad. I told him I was sorry. That I was, you know, not only a little sorry, you know. No big deal, it's a flosser. Later that day, my cell phone rang while I was at a meeting. And I didn't recognize the number, so I let it go. And it rang again a few minutes later, so I figured I'd better pick it up. It was the same number. I did pick it up, and it was Jay. And I couldn't hear what he was saying very well because the meeting was in a restaurant, and it was really loud. My car broke down, and I need a ride, he said. Where do you need a ride to? I asked him. I'm at a meeting. And while I said that, in the, in the movie in my mind, okay, he had driven to church, and he was there, and he wanted a ride somewhere. He, uh, he said a few more things I couldn't hear very well, or maybe I wasn't listening very well, until finally he said, forget it, I'll take care of it. Okay, I thought. And on my way back from the meeting, I stopped by Bethlehem, Jay's church. I thought that he could drop me off at Crossroads and then take the car, um, or jump it, or whatever. But neither he nor his car were there. And it was at that point that I realized that when he called me, he must have been stranded somewhere. But where was he? The secretary didn't know. I tried to call his cell phone, but it was dead. I tried to call the number he'd called me from while I was at the meeting, but it was the hospital. Finally, we connected, 
and he told me that he had called from the hospital because he had driven there to visit someone who was sick, and when he got outside, his car wouldn't start. Why didn't you tell me that on the phone? I said, I didn't know you were stranded. I would have left the meeting and picked you up. I did tell you that on the phone. He said, you just weren't listening. Your meeting was more important than what I needed. Okay, this time I felt really, really, really bad. And I said, I'm sorry for the second time that day. I should have listened to you better. There was a long silence. And then Jay said, you have 75 mistakes left. <laughs> In today's gospel reading, Peter asked Jesus how often to forgive someone who sinned against him. Jewish law required you to forgive someone who sinned against you three times. Peter knew that Jesus was generous, so he doubled that, and then he added one for good measure. Seven. It was a generous number. Not seven times, but 77 times, Jesus answered. And elsewhere in the Bible, it's recorded as 70 times seven times. Point being, if you're counting, stop. Being forgiven transforms us. A friend of mine told me about her niece, Jennifer, who plays tennis in college. She's had several coaches, and she left the school that she was at last year because the coach wasn't helping her. There are two kinds of coaches, my friend told me. There are transactional coaches and transformational coaches. Transactional coaches see coaching as an agreement. The coach gives the athletes guidance, resources, and everything that they need to be successful. In return, the athletes have to perform. If the athlete doesn't perform, the coach doesn't spend time working with the athlete. The point of that kind of coaching is to win games. Jennifer's problem isn't or wasn't that transactional coaching is bad. In fact, it's pretty common in athletics, especially at the higher levels. The problem is that Jennifer had had a transformational coach when she was in high school. The goal of a transformational coach is to help the athlete grow and change positively because of their involvement with athletics. In high school, Jennifer's coach listened to her if she had a problem, asked her what was going on, and really wanted to help her if she wasn't performing very well. Took her out for pizza even after she lost a match. Knew who her friends were, knew who she was dating, knew when she broke up with her boyfriend. She coached to help Jennifer become the best athlete and the best person that she could possibly be, not just to win the games. Both styles of coaching work, but when someone is transformed by coaching, it is powerful and it is beautiful. There are transactional and transformational teachers, pastors, parents, marriages, Thank God I'm not in one of those, right? Are you in a transactional or a transformational relationship? Well, what does the teacher do when you won't or can't learn? What does the pastor do when you won't come to church? What do your parents do when you fail to meet their expectations? What happens when someone needs help and you don't listen? In Jesus, we see that we are not in a transactional relationship with God. What did God do when we betrayed Christ and killed him? We don't get what we deserve. That's what Jesus is saying here this morning. We do not get what we deserve. There's no point in trying to have a transaction with God. It's not going to work. We are forgiven. Forgiveness is fundamentally transformational. It's canceling out the transaction. It's writing off the debt. It's saying, the past is over. What did you learn? I want to share with you a true story that was on the ELCA Faith Lens blog. In December of 2012, Josh Brent, an offensive lineman with the Dallas Cowboys, got into his car after a night of partying and was involved in an accident. His passenger, Jerry Brown Jr., a teammate and Josh's best friend, was killed in the crash. 
At the time of the accident, Josh's blood level, blood alcohol level, was 0 0.018, twice the legal limit. He was eventually convicted of intoxicated manslaughter and served 180 days in jail and was sentenced to 10 years of probation. In June of 2014, Josh was released from jail and in early September, he was conditionally reinstated by the National Football League and given only a 10-game suspension. If all goes as planned, Josh will return to the football field a mere two years after he accidentally killed someone. While some people are outraged that Josh didn't serve more time in jail, and other people were really surprised that the NFL would allow him to return so quickly, Stacy Jackson, the mother of Jerry Brown Jr., announced that she was very happy that Josh had been reinstated to the Dallas Cowboys. Shortly after the accident, Jackson publicly stated that she had forgiven Josh and that she hoped that others, including the Dallas Cowboys, would do the same. <coughs> At Josh's sentencing, she asked the court for leniency. And when the news of his reinstatement was made public, she once again said that she forgave Josh and that her hope was that Josh would be given the opportunity to rebuild his life. My beautiful son is in heaven now, she said. And Josh has to be given a chance to live his life for something else. We all make mistakes. We all have an entrance date and an exit date. Although I miss Jerry every day, I know that he would be happy that Josh is going to be able to keep on playing football. I see Christ in her, and I am so grateful that we have a transformational Christ rather than a transactional one. He said, Father, forgive them, not an eye for an eye. He said, forgiveness is part of being Christian. Whether he said we need to forgive 77 times or 70 times 7, the point is that counting isn't the point. One of the things that I'd forgotten until I started my call to serve at Crossroads was how transactional the educational system is. Students sometimes feel like a number. The numbers that define them are their grade point average, their IQ, their weight on the scale, the number of dollars in their bank accounts and their wallets. They need to hear about the God who does not transact business with them, but who yearns to forgive and transform them so that they can forgive and transform the world. They see glimpses of this God when they eat a delicious lunch made by someone from a church just like yours, which costs only a dollar. When we open a food pantry at Crossroads, where they can come every week and they can take what they need, and all that we ask is having been transformed if they will come and help somebody else sometime on down the road when they have more than enough and can share. They see this transformational Christ when we pass the offering basket in worship and we tell them that what matters most isn't what they can put into it, but that they're there. And I can assure you that's not what the MSU bursar's office is telling them. <laughs> you love all of the children in your congregation. You teach them about the God who would transform them and that God will use them to transform their families, their schools, their communities, and someday even their congregations. Thank you so much for your support of the Ministry of Crossroads. Thank you for supporting me so that I can share that message with them at all as, as well, and they can go and share that message with others. We share that message not only with young adults who have grown up in congregations like this, but also with those who have never had the opportunity to experience a congregation like yours. I'd like to invite now, uh, who did I ask? I think it was Sarah and Ed, right? Hannah and Ed, <laughs> to come up and share. Is this working very well? There. 
iPad. Okay. Everyone hear me okay? Yes? Okay, perfect. Um, we just kind of wanted to share um, what we love about Crossroads and what makes us come each week, sometimes three or four times a week. Um, and um, we have a lot to offer at Crossroads for students. We have events going on uh, multiple days throughout the week. Every Tuesday, as Tammy said, we do offer lunch for only a dollar for anyone to come. And we get lots of people coming in and local churches will cook homemade meals, which as college students, we don't get very often. So we enjoy coming to that. And last week we had spaghetti pizza and it was very delicious. Uh, every Wednesday we have worship at 8 p.m. at our building. And um, we offer, we have campus kitchen that's there. And it's a service they um, separate, kind of separate from Crossroads, but they do their, we have a big kitchen in our basement and they repackage food and give it to those in need. And then as Tammy said, we do have Campus Cupboard, which is a food shelf for students living in the dorms, living off campus. Um, if they just can't really make ends meet to get food that month, they can stop by for food shelf and get food so they can make it through. Thank you, Hannah. Well, as Tammy said, my name's Ed. I'm actually a senior at uh, MSU this year. And for the past two years, my sophomore, my junior, I was actually student president at Crossroads. And, you know, Tammy asked us to speak today. So I was wondering, you know, what I should say. So I thought I should describe what kind of people you'll see at worship. Well, there's no specific degree or area of study that you'll get. We range from engineering to nursing to music and everything in between. We have undergrads, we have graduate students, and we even have doctoral candidates who are, who are actually teaching themselves. We have people who have just started their journey, who are 18, 19 years old, to 30, 30 somethings who still feel the need to come to, to campus. People who have been bo born, grew up in Mankato, and those who have come from all around the nation. And what's important is they all keep coming and we all keep coming back because it's just the place that Crossroads is. That it's something about it, it drives us to come back. It's a treat. Every lunch for a buck, every worship, every activity we do. And the reason we're able to do this is because churches like here in Wells and all around are able to help us continue to spread God's word. So, thank you. Our hymn, and remember this is kind of what we're going to be be doing for a while to so build us up Lord ELW 670 sing out
Let us continue with our creed as printed. I believe in God, who is my Father. He made me and he takes care of me. He does this because he loves me. I believe in Jesus, who is my Savior. He died for me and he came back to life for me. He did this because he loves me. I believe in the Holy Spirit. He fills me with faith and he keeps me holy. He does this because he loves me. This is my God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I love him and will serve him with all my heart. Um, the peace of the Lord be with you always. We share that peace with one another. as you are able as the offerings brought forward.
Let us pray. Together. Merciful God, as grains of wheat scattered upon the hills were gathered together to become one bread, so let your church be gathered together from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. For yours is the glory, through Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the prayers of the church. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we thank you. We thank you for being transformed today by the gospel, by the sharing of the gospel from Crossroads Ministries. We pray for that ministry, God. We pray that they will continue to transform students that come into their care. We pray for Good Shepherd Lutheran and Wells, Father, that we will be transformed ourselves, continue to be transformed by this gospel. Lord, in your mercy, yes, sir. we pray, Heavenly Father, for the whole church. Give us tongues that speak words of welcome and acceptance. Lord, in your mercy. Show us with your gifts, O God. Give us hands that share the wealth of your creation and that tend to its keeping. Lord, in your mercy. Silence our quarreling, O God. Hold us accountable to one another as brothers and sisters in Christ and make us eager to reconcile and quick to forgive. Lord, in your mercy. Satisfy us with good things, O God. Give healing to those who suffer in mind, body, and soul. Give respite to those who care for them. Give them rest and hope for all those who worry. Especially we pray this week in our fellowship here in the body of Christ for Shannon and Jal, Jan and Bill, Stu, Kathy, Ray, Bud, Marlene, Brian, Emily, Mary, and those we name silently in our hearts. Strengthen our faith, O oh God, and fill us with hope as we humbly kneel before you. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, make your ways known to us. Hold us upright as we work for justice in our, in our neighborhoods, in wells, in other communities, our nation, and the world. Lord, in your mercy. You, O oh God, are the Lord of the dead and of the living. Hold us together with all the saints in your redeeming and steadfast love today and all days. Lord, in your mercy. Trusting in your mercy and goodness, we bring before you these prayers and whatever else you see that we need in the name of the one who sets us free, Jesus Christ, our Savior, who teaches us to pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please rise for the blessing. And now the God of hope, fill you and I with love and joy and peace in believing the gospel and then sharing that with one another in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing hymn is Shine, Jesus Shine, from the Praise and Worship Book 142.
serve the Lord in all that you do. Thanks be to God.